Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. It's a balmy weekend in Detroit, and that means one thing. The Woodward Dream Cruise is underway. We take you down the strip. Coming up. A new study out of U of M looking at vaccination rates in Detroit yielded some surprising results. Find out who's deciding not to get the shot. And a Detroit police lieutenant facing serious charges accused of sexually assaulting a fellow officer. Topping our news tonight at five, Chief James White speaking a short time ago about this morning's arraignment of one of his lieutenants. This is Willie Duncan, a 20 year veteran of the department who is now suspended. Local four defender Sean Lay live with what we know so far. And Sean, I understand the incident allegedly happened this past winter. That's one incident we just spoke with the chief moments ago. He's now revealing that not one Detroit police officer Two Detroit police officers have come forward to accuse Lieutenant Willie Duncan of sexually assaulting them. Two separate investigations were launched. The chief, as you can tell, is deeply disturbed by what those investigations are finding. It's troubling, it's devastating, it's, it's something that you can't even prepare for. I mean, mentally and emotionally. Interim Detroit Police Chief James White reacting within this past hour to news that a veteran lieutenant in the department, Willie Duncan, was accused of sexually assaulting another officer after a party back in May. When that officer came forward, another officer also came forward, saying Duncan sexually assaulted her in February. The allegations against the lieutenant uh, you know, they're to say troubling is, is an understatement. Right now, only charges for the February alleged attack have been approved as the investigation into the May allegations continue. Duncan was in court today. Mr. Duncan uh, allegedly did um, enter the complainant's home and uh, forcibly uh, engaged in sex with her against her will. We are told both officers are okay at this time. Lieutenant Duncan has been suspended without pay. It is a privilege to be a Detroit police officer and if your conduct does not support that privilege of being able to represent this department in this city with this badge it is my responsibility to ensure that you don't wear one back here live it's important to repeat and point out yet again that Lieutenant Duncan is charged in the February allegations uh, May charges uh, for the May uh, allegations were not approved. More investigation needs to be done. That's exactly what DPD is doing right now. Duncan's attorney, I spoke with him. He says Lieutenant Duncan denies all of the charges. Karen and Devin, we're talking about third degree sexual conduct. That is known as statutory rape here in Michigan. Carries a 15 year maximum penalty. Back to you. Sean, what have you been able to find out about Lieutenant Duncan and his career with DPD? He was well liked, a boss, a leadership position here. That's why so many members of DPD are absolutely stunned by this. He was the longtime leader of DPD's special operations unit, and then he headed up the commercial auto theft department. So 20 years here, was suspended without pay right now. All right, we know you'll be following this. Thank you, Sean. Got some breaking news just in from General Motors. The automaker is expanding its recall of the Chevy Bolt because of a fire risk due to a manufacturing defect. Company says it is recalling bolts from uh, 2020 through the 2022 model years. A previous recall covered models from 2017 to 2019. The expanded recall now is going to cost General Motors an additional billion dollars. The trend of rising cases continuing in Michigan when it comes to coronavirus. The state reporting 4,197 new cases and 37 more deaths over the past two days. It's an average of about 2,100 cases per day. Meantime, 65% of Michigan adults have received one or more vaccine dose. New research out of the University of Michigan showing there is an uphill battle when it comes to getting kids vaccinated in Detroit. Priya Man, live with the results of a survey measuring the degree of vaccine hesitancy in households with children. And Priya, that hesitancy can be tough to overcome. Yeah, that's right. And when you take a look at the numbers for eligible kids in Michigan, you're looking at about a third of eligible kids have been vaccinated. But in Detroit, that number drops to fewer than 20%. Here in Campus Marshes, all the folks we talked to were fully vaccinated, but the study yielded some surprising results. Well, my grandkids just got their shots. My granddaughter's 13, my grandson's 12. 
A new survey by U of M found only about a third of Detroit adults living with kids between the ages of 12 and 17 had either gotten them or were likely to get them vaccinated against COVID-19. They're afraid for the kids and they don't know what will happen if their child get vaccinated. I think the school year is going to be very difficult. I think that uh, 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 we're going to have lots of situations with schools having to shut down. Researchers also discovered parents of unvaccinated kids were less likely to get the shot than other adults who were not parents. I found that surprising because I would think that parents would have more motivation to be vaccinated than other adults because of the risk of transmitting the virus to others in their household. However, adults in Detroit homes with kids were more likely to be concerned about being out in the public during the pandemic. They're not coronavirus deniers by any means. They're actually very concerned about their safety and are taking steps to mitigate that risk like mask wearing and social distancing. But protection does not seem to extend to the vaccine. And that's what the big puzzle is, uh, that were the unanticipated finding was why doesn't it include getting the shot? Yeah, so if you're wearing masks and social distancing, why aren't you getting the vaccine? Researchers say, well, the numbers are troubling. This could actually present an opportunity. As students are returning back to school, you can start to target those parents who are hesitant about getting the shot and hopefully boost the number of people who are getting vaccinated. Reporting live tonight from downtown Detroit, I'm Priya Mann. Before. Hopefully, the key word exactly right. All right, Priya. The U.S. is keeping its borders with Canada and Mexico closed for at least another month. Government saying the closure will now go until at least September 21st. The Department of Homeland Security says the ban is still needed to slow the spread of the virus, and especially the Delta variant. The U.S. has been facing increasing pressure to reopen the borders. Canada reopened its border, of course, to travelers earlier this month. Meantime, Lions legend Barry Sanders has tested positive for coronavirus. He tweeted to say that he was vaccinated, not experiencing any symptoms. He says he is staying home until doctors tell him it's okay to go out. Barry also says he'll be ready to go for the Lions' first game of the season at Ford Field September 12th. President Biden addressing the nation today on the evacuation effort in Afghanistan. The president says flights have started back up after being stopped for a few hours today. The president says 13,000 people have been evacuated since Saturday and flights won't stop until every American is home. We're going to do everything, everything that we can to provide safe evacuation for our Afghan allies, partners, and Afghans who, 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 who might be targeted. If the, because of their association with the United States. But let me be clear, any American who wants to come home, we will get you home. Coming up on Local 4 News at 5.30, I talk to intelligence experts about what the situation in Afghanistan means for the terrorists here at home. Weekend is upon us. There are a lot of car lovers in the area right now hoping for beautiful weather this weekend. Nothing to threaten the finish on oh, some very important no, pieces of machinery. No, spent a lot of time yeah. shining everything up. It is really nice out there, Paul. Yeah, a very sultry, balmy evening. This is the kind of summer evening back in the 50s and 60s when they do that drag racing down Woodward. This is kind of, this is it. We have temperatures well into the 80s. The heat index just a few degrees warmer than what the actual temperature is because there's just a lot of humidity in the air. And we had one shower this afternoon. You can see it right there southwest of the airport in southwest Wayne County. We had one shower that popped up over the past half hour or so. It's already starting to fizzle out. As you can see, most of us have a dry evening ahead with temperatures just slowly falling from the 80s into the 70s by mid to late evening. Uh, the air is calm. There'll be no breeze to help you out. So as far as that weekend forecast, yeah, you'll need the pool. Upper 80s, both days warm and muggy. A little better chance for a thunderstorm Sunday. So we're going to time that out for you coming up in just a little bit, guys. All right, Paul. And of course, the Woodward Dream Cruise actually is still officially a few hours away, but that doesn't matter. Things are already uh, ramping up yeah. along Woodward. Most definitely. Let's take a live look from Sky 4. Now the event is scheduled for Saturday from 10 a.m. to 9 p.m. So I guess you can call this the pre-party. And you know who's in the middle of it all? Our good friend Tim Pamphlet. Hey, Tim. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. We're down at uh, near 13 in Woodward. We're in Mustang Alley right now. Look at all these Mustangs, the Cobras, the Marquis. Uh, a Channel 4 truck there. We've got some Broncos down here. The Broncos, we've got something special coming up in a second. But first, take a look at all the chrome. The chrome is shining at 30 Mile in Woodward Memorial Park in Royal Oak. The park is full of love. <laughs> it's my baby. 
and this is the first time at the Wilbur Dream Cruise with this car. Talk of the babies, look a little Evan here. He just loves the motor cars. Evan is just in love with cars. His favorite right now is the trucks. He loves anything that's loud and definitely anything that's fast. Beep, beep. Yes, you may want to keep out of Evan's way as we pull out now onto Woodward Avenue. Look at this. We've got this shot set up. The two Broncos on the left, the original on the right. No, no, um, you meant to be over in the other middle lane. There you go. We've been practicing this all afternoon. There you go. You just can't seem to tell the youngsters what to do. Look at that shot. The classic and the classic to be the Broncos making their appearance along Woodward Avenue. Back to you guys in the studio. Great side by side. I like yeah. that comparison. <laughs> really cool. Yeah, nice. It's really cool. So good luck on a big weekend for a lot of car lovers. We're just getting started here at five. Coming up, airline passengers out of control. It's gotten so bad. New measures are being taken to protect flight attendants. Also, remember the ship that got stuck in the Suez Canal, which blocked all of the other ships for days? Well, today they gave it another shot. We'll see how they made sure things would go a little more smoothly this time. And with so many souped up cars around for the Dream Cruise, the temptation might be there for drivers to open things up, but there is a warning. Police want you to hear, and that's next.